Hey everybody, this is Andrew from TS for Tech, and today I've got a really cool thing to take a look at and a pretty cool gadget um, from Synology. This is a Synology disk station. Now, the first thing I want to do is thank Synology for sending this over to the channel for an unboxing, initial first look. I'm going to do actually a couple part series on this uh, Synology disk station. So in this video, this is kind of like a part one, just an unboxing, initial kind of look at the device, um, you know, talk a little bit about some of the features, what you get in the box. And subsequently, I will do a couple videos on setting it up, do some screen recording of the interface and, you know, how I'm going to set this up in my home office. And then I'll probably go from there. So as I'm thinking about this right now, I might have uh, two or three, maybe even four videos on this device because there's a lot of capabilities uh, with the Synology disk station. I've seen other videos on YouTube and, you know, there's, there's tons of unboxings and tons of things like that. So I'm going to try to go quickly through this video and the subsequent videos, I'll go into more details and, you know, talking about upgrading and things like that because I did buy uh, a few additional items for this. I purchased some additional memory because um, this has four gigs of RAM. I want to upgrade it to eight. I actually got some SSD cards that can be used for caching, so enabling uh, disk write and read cache on the Synology. So I'm going to talk about those as well, probably in the next video. But in this video, I'm just going to take a look at this. So this is the disk station 9 or DS920 plus and so that includes four bays so it has four bays you know in this unit and the ability to scale this so their Synology makes an additional kind of external uh, drive case um, that doesn't contain kind of all the electronics that this one does but you can basically expand you know many of their disk station base units with an additional storage so you can add additional drives if you hit the capacity here etc so the cool thing is that you can grow with this over time uh, you can use it obviously to the max capacity that you might want to put in it uh, to start but then know that you can buy an additional unit over time and you're not don't have to necessarily replace the drives here um, you can add on to it so that's really cool so this one does have a four core cpu has expandable storage and RAM. Uh, there's two LAN ports and it does support link aggregation. So if you have a uh, network switch that supports uh, aggregated LAN links, you can use that. And it also supports um, uh, NVMe SSD cards uh, system cache, which I just kind of showed. So from a high level, that's what you got here. And if you don't know anything about Synology, um, you should definitely do some research these things are not just like hard drives, network attached storage. They're basically mini Linux computers and they have a whole interface and a whole ability to run all sorts of packages and additional software features and things like that. Uh, you can create your own private like OneDrive or a Dropbox scenario with a Synology drive. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can run Plex on this. You can stream videos in your own home on your Apple TV using the Plex app. I mean, there's just just an insane amount of things you can do. So I'll try to cover some of those um, in some of the additional videos as well as um, backups, right? You know, it, you never really want to kind of view a network attached storage as your only backup. So you, you probably want to do some things where you offload some of these files even to the cloud. And, you know, the built-in backup software here, you can sync to, you know, Amazon uh, S3 buckets, you can sync to OneDrive, Box, you know, Dropbox, tons of, you know, Azure storage if you're kind of more technically inclined. There's tons of things you can do with this device, which is going to be really cool. Um, you know, either backing up your local computers to this and then backing up files from this to other things. Uh, there's just tons of stuff you can do. Uh, not, in, you know, not even to mention like Synology uh, surveillance system networked IP cameras, all kinds of stuff. There's just a million things you can do, which is super cool. But at the highest level, we'll just take a look at this, okay? I feel like I've already talked for five minutes and haven't done anything. So we'll just open this up. And I'll have to kind of take this all out and then I'll move the box out of the way. 
Okay, so we'll take a look at the, at the, the device itself. So here, obviously, uh, power cable, power cable, bunch of screws, probably for the hard drives or something else. You also get uh, a key, little plastic keys here, if you can see that, plastic key. That's for locking the drives in the, in the bays, if you'd like to do that. Comes with land cable, two land cables. But this is what the device looks like if you're just taking a look at it, right? So as I said, it's got four bays. It's got a USB connection on the front, obviously some LEDs, status indicators, that sort of thing. On the bottom of it, you can see two spaces for the SSD cache, which usually just kind of pop open. Flip around to the back side, you have two case fans here and two LAN ports here. Power in, another USB slot. You have a Kensington lock, kind of a, if you want to lock this down, if you're in an office environment or something like that. Two LAN ports. You have a um, external SATA port here as well. And I believe this is how you connect the other, if you get the expansion bay, you can connect it via a cable there. So all in all, I mean, it's just pretty compact, mostly made out of plastic. Yeah, it's mostly made out of plastic, I guess. So, I mean, not, not doesn't feel cheap or anything like that. So, so as you can see here, these just kind of pop open and then you get the dry bays out. And these should be toolless, I thought. So I don't even know what those screws, I'll have to check what those screws are for. Um, but you don't need, you don't need screws for the hard drive caddies. They just, these pieces, plastic pieces just pop out. Plastic pieces pop out and then you can just put the drives in and just kind of snap these back in, kind of hold them in. And then those just kind of slide in. So like I said, you got the four bays. Kind of pop out like that and then on the inside you can see here maybe a little bit there's a there's a slot area right in there that the external um, that the additional memory can go so like I said if you want to add some more memory like I'm gonna add another four gigabytes to this you can do that now there are, um, now Synology sells memory upgrades for their devices. This is supposed to have a maximum of eight gigs of memory supported by at least what Synology says. I've seen some other YouTube videos where folks have put like an additional eight or 16 gigs in here. And it seems like the device recognizes it and uses it. But there's some debate, I guess, on you know, whether it's just showing up and it's, and it's not really being used. So for me, I'm just going to go with the four gigs of an additional memory to the, to the max technically supported of eight. I don't want to press my luck and have something go wrong and something get corrupted or whatever, because I am not using, you know, a supported amount of memory. So that's what I'm going to do there. So, I, I mean, you simply just kind of put the drives in, plug it in, and you should be good to go, go through the setup etc. Now I also have four eight terabyte SATA drives from Synology and these the these are the like Synology drives made specifically for network attached storage. These are from Synology, Synology branded. You don't have to use Synology drives obviously. You can use any any drives you really want um, for this as long as they're uh, SATA drives. There's a configurator on this on the Synology website, which I can link to below, so you can see how much usable storage that you'll get out of the different combination of drives. Synology sent me with this, and I do totally appreciate this, four eight terabyte drives. So I'm gonna fill this up with four eight terabyte drives and use the Synology hybrid RAID setup. Um, 
to get to uh, you know to get the storage. So that's pretty cool. And I'll just open one of these up real quick. Now I've never used a Synology drive in the past, but I have heard that these are very very good drives. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of performance you can get out of these, etc. So it's a Synology drive, but on the on the actual um, packaging, it says Toshiba Electronic Devices. So I'm assuming that this is kind of like a co-manufactured thing where Synology partnered with Toshiba. At least that's what I would assume based on reading that. <laughs> um, doesn't necessarily say on the actual drive. Yeah, uh, yeah, it does. So on the bottom, it does say uh, Toshiba Electronic Device and Storage Corporation, but this is a Synology, Synology drive, has a Synology serial number, etc. on it. So eight terabytes, pretty cool. So I'm gonna use these and set this up. So again, four of those drives put in here. Um, that's what I'm gonna use for my initial setup. And what I'm gonna do probably is I'll do the initial setup, I'll get this running, and then I'll throw in the SSD cache cards and the extra memory, and then I'll just cover that in the second video where I talk about uh, you know, setting, the, setting this up and getting on the network and all of that. I'll probably just kind of handle that then. Um, but for now, like I said, this comes with four gigs, has the Intel Celeron J4125 four core processor, so that's a two gigahertz uh, bursting up to 2.7 gigahertz. So uh, from what I know, that's pretty good on these devices. It's more than enough to handle the Linux operating system or you know based operating system that, that's being used. Uh, hot toppable drives, uh, compatible drive types. You can get um, four, three and a half, or two and a half SATA hard drives, and then the two M2 2280 NVMe SSDs for the cache. On the external ports, those are both USB 3 ports, one on the front and the back. Yeah, two uh, gigabit RJ45 LAN connections. Yeah, I mean, all in all, just a ton of ton of capability in this in this device. I can't even go over all the actual software features and things like that at this point. So uh, what we're going to do, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and put this together. Um, connect it to my network, and then I will take that as the uh, as part two, and discuss going through the setup of this configuration of everything else. Um, but in this video, I just again wanted to do a quick unboxing, show you what you get in the device, talk about the hard drives, the additional things that I'm going to do, and we are going to go from there. So I will link to this in the description below. If you have any questions, go ahead and post those below, and I'll be sure to answer them as far as I. Can, uh, as far as I can. This is Andrew from TS for Tech. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.